guys, it's Does It Matter and Ellen the Dream. And this is episode seven of our podcast, Confessions of a Stand Mixer edition. Today, we are going to be discussing the Ellen 5 tour film and uh, just a warning that while we wish we were going to be talking about all of the positives about it, the truth is that we're, we're not really impressed and mostly going to be critiquing it. Sorry. But. <laughs> yes, apologies about that. <laughs> um, we have actual like uh, st- reasons. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. We have constructive critiques. We're we're not just like uh, bashing. <laughs> yeah, we're not just bashing it because we don't like certain things. Like there, there are actual objective issues with it that should have been fixed and weren't for some reason before it went out. So. Um, that's yeah. primarily what we'll be talking about. We'll, we'll give like also some critique of just like our personal style things that we didn't like. And we'll go over a couple things that are positives. But just a, a forewarning to you guys, we are going to be heavily critiquing it. Um, we can start off with the fun fact that uh, it's actually two tour dates. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Woohoo. Um, so it is the last date of the tour and uh as it presents itself that there is footage from the last uh tour date uh but there's also footage from the tour date where the lift underneath the stage got broken halfway through the show so it's i do not understand why the choice was made to include footage from both dates because it was a poor choice uh based on the way it was executed but that there, there are two different tour dates uh, included within the video throughout the whole thing, which uh, brings us to the first uh, critique, the objective critique, which is that the audio and the videos do not sync up. You can tell that they were going between like the two different dates trying to get the clips in, and so they'll say something that doesn't necessarily match up, most likely because they were using the opposite one. Yeah, like there's there's it, there's even like super clear issues where it makes the girls look like they're lip syncing because they're using video from one date and the audio from the other date. Yeah. Like a few examples I just know off the top of my head during Woman Like Me at the end, uh, Perry has the mic to her mouth and is singing. And I will tell you guys, I know for a fact that's live, that portion of the set. But in the audio they're using, um, her vocal doesn't exist because she held it out to the crowd. So you're watching a shot of her singing it and there's no vocal from Perry. There's another shot in Wasabi where Jesse says like, what the hell do you know? And they're using a shot from a tour date and like the opposite audio. And so it looks like she's lip syncing because the mic is down by her hip while the words are still coming out. And it's really just because they use the opposite audio and visual. Um, I think it happens to Jade too at some point. I just forget uh what the exact clip was but it happens a number of times throughout there's also some other sync issues just as far as sometimes like their mouths don't sync up with what they're doing because of it and uh you'll have someone shouting to the crowd but they were actually lip syncing and so it's just it's a weird like situation with the sync issues and that's like an an objective critique like those shouldn't have existed like if they were going to use the opposite audio and visual then they should have made sure that they weren't causing that issue where you're watching perry sing and there's no vocal from perry um that meant that the camera shouldn't have been on her those things should have been caught in post and they obviously weren't and so it's it's poor i don't even know what you call it but it's objectively not good editing yeah and also, I meant to say this at the beginning, or more towards the beginning, none of this is the girls' fault. It's really whoever edited and put this together. So it's all post-production. Who yeah, really it's, it's probably primarily this. the uh, head editor and the director are probably the ones responsible for this. Yeah. So when we say this, we're not like bashing the girls. We're bashing <laughs> whoever made this. Yeah, I mean, the girls did their portion of it, right? They did the concert. They, you know, did all of their their part of it, and it got recorded. They actually did it twice. Yeah. But whoever was in charge of executing it and turning it into a film did a poor job. Yeah. 
and it's also looks like it was a whoever did it attempted to edit the film in the same style that the promos for the search were uh edited which is kind of a poor choice because those were like short promo clips uh with very like not prominent audio that was meant for style rather than watchability uh, which brings us to our next issue, if you would like to comment first. Yeah, a lot of the like cuts that they used, it was just really fast. And it was very obvious that they were trying to go with the speed of the music and the beats that were in the songs, which wasn't the smartest idea because it just overall made it look really messy and you couldn't see what was going on because it would switch from whoever was singing over to one of the dancers or the crowd or a long shot or anything really. Um, Some of the ones I noticed were during, I think it was Woman Like Me. It was a lot of whenever Perry was singing, it would switch to Jade and the dancer and then would go right back to Perry And then it would cut somewhere else. So like she would get like maybe a few words in and then it would cut again. Um, And the same thing happened with Jesse and Leanne where Jesse was singing and then it would cut to Leanne for a split second just for her to do like a head nod on the beat and then would cut back. So it's like certain cuts and clips weren't necessary there. Um, So it just it was just really fast. Yeah, it's, it, it makes it jarring, especially because it, it's a stylistic choice to do it for, you know, 15, 20 seconds during a particular part of a song. But they did it the entire first three songs of the concert. And then they actually still did it later on throughout the film. It was just uh, not quite as bad. And then that becomes that becomes almost unwatchable. Like that's, you know, a second every clip and it's jarring and there's flashing lights and they also were playing around with slow-mo and adding tour film like screens, sorry, tour screens, like overlaying that on the film itself, not just like letting them be in the background on the tour screens. So it makes it really hard to watch. You you aren't actually seeing anything. You can't actually process what you're seeing. And because they did it the entire three songs, it just makes it kind of a poor watching experience. Yeah. And like on top of that, it's, there's already so much going on on the stage. Like you have like the dancers, the lighting, them singing, the background visuals, the fire, like, so already it's a lot going on. So then when you add like, them zooming in and then zooming back out and cutting like it just makes it just a lot to take in and then something else that I didn't uh particularly like uh that's similar to uh this issue that they had is I had hoped when I noticed it was happening because you can see it from immediately from the first as they lower themselves down onto the stage uh, for salute as soon as the salute actually starts you can see it start up to be a problem And so I had hoped that, well, maybe the upside to the way they were editing it would mean that they would uh, be able to edit around the fact that the dance breaks weren't as in sync um, and well coordinated as they should have been. I was hopeful that the editing would hide that, but somehow they managed to still include those shots despite the poor editing. (laughs) So that was kind of disappointing because I was like, if you're going to have this type of editing, you should be able to hide the fact that the dancing as a group wasn't as good as it should have been, but they managed to include the wide shots where it wasn't in sync. (laughs) Yeah, they could have used other clips where they were more in sync, but instead they went for the opposite (laughs) it's not that the dance breaks were completely out of sync there there are plenty of shots you could have used where it's it's really in sync so the fact that they managed to include shots where it wasn't while doing this type of editing is just a little like how why (laughs) between those things kind of seems like there wasn't a lot of emotional investment 
in yeah. making this look good. Yeah, it looks like it was just, I don't want to say thrown together, but it looks like they were trying to knock it out. <laughs> yeah, and I, I do want to uh, take notice that um, it was never intentionally meant to be a tour film that happened later because uh, when Lan got asked about it online, she was like, oh, she, you know, she made some remark like, oh, that would be interesting. Like, wouldn't that be cool? So th- these were originally filmed just for the sake of promo for the search and was later turned into a tour film. So that's something to consider, but it still should have been executed better, in my opinion. Yeah, they should have seen what they had first before they brought it into the editor. So I don't know if it's just the leaked version that we have access to online because we're in the U.S. So we weren't able to buy or go to the theaters to see it. But the leaked version online doesn't have some of the intermissions and the intermissions it does has. It does have it cuts to the crowd more than you almost see the actual intermission. Yeah. That's a little disheartening in the sense that you know, you would hope that you'd actually get to see the intermission and like, like the wasabi one's not even in there. The beginning one for the concert is cut short for, for Joan of Arc and standing uh, as sisters together. That one, it's just like a lot of like cutting around to the crowd when you really just want it to like stay on the tour screen for the most part. And like, there were a lot of things that they cut out because at this particular concert, they had at the beginning, a whole screening of like one I've been missing, which I don't know if, like, they probably intentionally cut that out, but, like, that was playing on the side screens before it started. And, like, the lyric video playing. They had Beyonce playing, like, very loudly through the crowd while it was on the screen. And, like, it was cutting between people, like, different audience members. Um, And the intermissions were a lot longer than what they're showing. And, yeah, so they did cut a lot of the stuff out than what I remember. (laughs) you kind of want them to keep the intermissions in because it really builds like a concert atmosphere, but for whatever reason, they were cut short or not included for some of them. Yeah, especially for the last one, like where they do um, more than words and touch. Like that was a long intermission because you could see them bringing out like the mats for the water. Like I remember sitting there watching them bring all the stuff out and it wasn't in here so like they probably cut it for time but I feel like it is a kind of a crucial part because it makes it feel like a concert yeah I think like even if you had just kind of shown a couple shots of it you know you don't have to sit there the entire five minutes or whatever but yeah oh something else that was weird uh so Jesse and Jade are the only ones that swore during the concert and uh Jesse multiple times and Jade once and shout out to my ex uh because Jade says shout out to my ex bitch Um, and it's at the end that's really easy to just cut out but jesse swore in wasabi when she was hyping up the crowd she swore during her speech before the cure (laughs) i think she swore another time and yeah when she would do that it's in the middle of her sentence so they instead of like actually bleeping it or anything like that to signify that she had sworn uh they actually legit tried to just remove her audio and like smooth it out which just actually ended up sounding like they'd made an audio mistake and it was really funky so i didn't really like the way they chose to censor her i understand that they had to do it because it went into theaters but the way they went about censoring her i think there was a better way to do it oh (laughs) there are some weird shots during reggaeton lento (laughs) (laughs) let's discuss (laughs) so the entire concert film was not like this however this particular song and i don't know if it's just because it's supposed to be like a sexy song but the amount of slow-mo hanging shots on like like they're like (sighs) I don't think I can use the word I want to use. Lower body. <laughs> if you know, From you the know. front and the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm talking like slow-mo, hang on it, two, three seconds. like To where it's almost uncomfortable because it feels like you're crossing a line. <laughs> and there are some shots that like are literally meant to just like scan up their entire bodies and then cut as soon as you get to their face. Yeah. 
I assumed that it was a choice made because it's supposed to be like a sexy song, but it verged. It felt a little bit like more like objectification. Yeah. Um, the way it was done. Obviously, the, the girls choreographed it and choose what they wear and act the way they want. And they are doing those things doing those things in a sexual manner so they're not being sexualized when they're not being sexual but and this was different from the rest of the concert the entire thing didn't feel this way wasn't filmed this way but the way this one particular song was filmed it kind of crossed the line into it felt like we were then objectifying them rather than just watching them be sexy on stage if that makes sense yeah And I'm honestly surprised that they even left it in because I've seen a lot of dance moms and when they've used clips like that, it gets like brought to their attention and like canceled. So I'm surprised that like they were even allowed to do that even because they censored like other parts. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. There there are some things that were weird. Like they cut out the lower bodies of Jesse and Leanne when they were grinding in bounce back, but we got a real nice long, like close up shot of Jay Z grinding during no more sat songs. Yeah. So like, I don't know the, the things that got cut out were weird or like cropped yeah. out rather. <laughs> um, it made it really inconsistent. Yeah. So the, the choice there was just odd and like if you were gonna cut it out why would you cut to the thing you're gonna try to censor I don't know like you could have chosen a different if you didn't want to show it you didn't have to show it you know it's kind of like uh, I don't know if you guys ever noticed but when they when they during the glory days tour when they used to perform touch on tv uh every director would cut away from pessy when they would start to grind and that's because it's it needed to go on television so that was always a like an intentional choice. The director would see them start doing that, and the camera would cut. Uh, so it was kind of like one of those situations where if you didn't want it to be in the film, why did you give us a close up and then try to censor it at the same time? Yeah, it would have just been better to cut to something else on stage. There's there's plenty of things on stage. There's four of them. There are dancers. You love the crowd. You could have cut to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So in that sense, it's just like a weird choice. I mean, again, it kind of goes back to the same idea of like, why are you showing Perry singing when there's no vocal of Perry singing? Like you could have chosen a million other shots during that time. Yeah. So this, there were two places that I really recognized it, but I'm sure it was in other places I didn't catch. Um, At the beginning of Jesse's speech she's talking and the lights were down um except for like uh where she was like the spotlight ish when Um, she cried or before the cure uh when she cried yeah during like that section um it's very obvious that it's dark throughout the arena and then it'll cut to people in the audience and it'll be bright light to where it was before the concert started which isn't like that big of a deal but it just kind of but it's something that it's something that could have very easily been fixed in post-production yeah because it's it's very obvious that it wasn't at that moment that it was there's no reason that you can't color correct that very very easily in post So it it's like the fact that it wasn't corrected again is like overlooking these little details that and there were a lot of overlooked little details. Um and yeah. so it, again it just kind of speaks to like the fact that this wasn't probably executed by people who had much investment in it, which is really unfortunate because this could have been a really great tour film. Um Yeah, it and- was a really good tour. Yeah, like this could have been really cool if it was done right. And so it kind of sucks that it wasn't. Yeah. Um, the other place I saw it was like at the very beginning of the concert with the first visual. It would show the visual of the guy announcing on the TV. And then it would cut to somebody in the crowd 
cut to another person in the crowd and then it would do like an extreme long shot of it being pitch black with the screen down and i was like um wait (laughs) so you can just tell it wasn't taken at the same time um so if they were going to use the lighter scenes they should have used those before the concert started not in the middle of the concert yeah that being said those lighting issues were in there that being said they for the majority of the video did uh do the color correction so that they kept it really dark and saturated which means that a lot of the colors really popped especially uh the stage colors so like the songs uh had colors to them <laughs> um like <laughs> one like me was purple power is red uh like reggaeton lento is orange uh you know the cure is like this purple color sacred love song is rainbowed so uh they did do a pretty good job of keeping and like really saturating those colors so that you associated with them with the visuals of that song which was nice uh yeah. i think bounce back was like green and blue i just wish that had been consistent throughout all of the color correction yeah and they kept it very dark which i like they didn't try to brighten it which they easily could have tried to do to make it a little bit more visible um when they were like maybe going in between songs or something they kept it dark so it felt like you were at the concert which was really nice it was just it was a good choice and then they did have like good quality like cameras yeah Uh, i mean we're watching like a 720 uh leaked online version (laughs) but even from that like you can tell that the camera quality was really good uh so they they definitely didn't necessarily like skimp on that in that sense yeah and they had they had good angles in in like where they were placed they just didn't use the clips that they got correctly in my opinion like where they were they had a good spot but they didn't use that to their advantage yeah i think the only camera angle that made absolutely no sense to me was the (laughs) one uh on stage left that overlooked their shoulders that they kept cutting to and i was like that was a weird one (laughs) i can't see like shit like i've been swearing too much but like i can't (laughs) see anything from this angle like why do you keep cutting to this yeah. I can't see choreo. I can't see all the girls. I can't, like, I'm just staring at like a shoulder and like the back of Jade's ponytail. <laughs> um, <laughs> I specifically they cut to it a lot during Woman Like Me, which is why like that's the image in my mind. That's uh, why I say Jade. But like uh, they did it throughout the concert, just like a lot during Woman Like Me, and it's just like I can't see anything. Why are you doing that? <laughs> oh yeah. Um- they did cut to a lot of scenes like it was very heavily focused on stage right like because all of the cameras were on stage left so every single time they showed the audience it would be right every time they showed the stage right like they didn't uh what's the word spread them out as much as they should have oh and then they they chose to do Uh, some slow-mo shots which I recognize being a stylistic choice from the search promo and I think it should have been ditched for the tour film tour videos like this normally slow-mo isn't used so it yeah should have been left out yeah like specifically I'm thinking of it in the sense of choreo like why are you slowing down a heavy choreo section yeah because it kind of it like lowers the impact it had It lowers the impact it has. It looks funny because I'm listening to a beat that doesn't match with what I'm seeing. You're missing out on choreo. Overall, it just seems like a weird choice to make. Yeah, if they would have used it on the crowd, that would have been a different story. But because it was heavily used on the dance um, breaks, I feel like that was just weird. Yeah, like that that was when the slow-mo happened. It was on dance (laughs) breaks. And you were like, why? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Or at least we were. Maybe some of you guys have completely different opinions for us and it than us and if you do definitely feel free to comment down below but we just saw a lot of things that just weren't executed well yeah I would say probably the biggest positive that I could come up with (laughs) is that it is we did get a professionally recorded version of the 
last ever concert and tour of OT4 Little Mix. Um, I I know that some of you guys are holding out hope that Jesse will come back or that they'll do some type of a reunion thing. And I'm not going to, you know, say neither of those are possible. But, you know, we have to kind of operate under the assumption that they'll never perform together again. And under that assumption, you know, we did get a professionally recorded version of, you know, that very last a tour and concert date where all four of them were together so I mean that that is a positive even if it wasn't executed the way you know it, it could have been yeah and then you said uh that one of the positives was like it, it made you sentimental right it brought back like your memories of oh, it yeah yeah I forgot to write that down I was looking at my notes like there was something I was gonna say <laughs> um yeah because that was that wasn't the first time I'd seen them. I saw them the night before, but because that was like one of the first concerts I have ever seen of them live, it brought back just a lot of good memories from that trip because that concert was a really fun concert to watch. And so having it in like HD was really nice to see. Yeah. It just made it the like happy memories come back while we're in this quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> it brought back a nice time. <laughs> so yeah, it just it was very nostalgic for me even though it wasn't that long ago. It yeah. <laughs> it feels like forever ago. It does. Like it really does. So many things have happened since that tour has been over. Cuz yeah. I remember making the favorite moments videos and I was even like months behind the tour. I think I finished like end of December, which obviously is like a month after the tour finished. So that was like I remember doing those and then I remember where I was in my life at that point and it was a very long time ago maybe not like clock or calendar wise but like things that have happened long time (laughs) yeah and when um like the day the film came out because it was on like the last day of tour um I was over there I was like thinking like hmm a year ago today I was in London right now how <laughs> like, that doesn't no. seem right no because it like out yeah it was just kind of mind-blowing to think about that uh that is pretty much our thoughts on the lm5 tour film we just wanted to be honest we wanted to share our thoughts with you guys uh this was something that one of you or a few of you wanted us to talk about so uh, hopefully you enjoyed our perspective on it maybe it wasn't what you thought it would be but uh we you know we always want to be honest with you guys when we do these and uh share our actual opinions because we think that's important and you know we also want to do that respectfully also, there should have been a clip of Debbie dancing with her drink in the audience. <laughs> yeah, apparently on that last tour date, a lot of the a lot of the girls' family were there, and yet there's no footage of that, which is a shame because that would have been a really great addition. Like I have a Snapchat video I could have sent them of Leanne's mom <laughs> in the audience next to me, like popping with her drink, and I don't know how that didn't make it in because it was so iconic. They must have just not had a camera on that section. Yeah, they had one um, at the section over, like, in front of them, but they didn't have one back one where she was. Yeah. They were all sitting right in there together, so I'm not really sure why a camera wasn't over there. That's a shame. Another missed opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, so those are our thoughts on the Ellen 5 tour film. We hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, even though maybe, you know, it was more critique than positive. But we enjoyed getting to talk about it and share our thoughts with you guys. And if there's anything that you guys ever want us to talk about, definitely leave it in the comments. Uh, We're always open to suggestions because we want to talk about things that you guys are interested in, as well as the things that we're interested in. We wanted to do something that was a little bit more discussion-based this time because we've been doing a lot of different rankings. uh, So we wanted to mix it up a little bit. So if these are something that you like, as well as the rankings, definitely let us know so that we can continue to do them and we'll see you guys next week for another episode thanks